Hello everyone, welcome to Abstergo Entertainment. The hacker has been caught and it's not me, so I'm gonna be hacking now. No. Come on. What? Bro. This is getting annoying. It's such a big area. Why am I missing? <sighs> it wasn't even that hard. Our initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. However, his corruption by the Assassin Order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed, just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Notice, too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality is built Enzio? around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze would be a risky character to develop. Why does he say Enzio? Oh, that's so annoying. Get you next. Mm. Okay, I have to enter this one. What? Ah, oh. I'm an idiot. Go back. this way. Angels. Mama says Count Rosenberg will take care of us now so long as Papa and Uncle John work for him. Our home is big but the Trebony, Trebony is a small town. Mama seems happy. Prague. Elizabeth Jane Watson. Who is this? That's a... Oh my god. Okay, that's too long. I'm not going to read it now. Divine Signs.
Okay, I need to hit this one. Oh, what the momentum carries. Oh shit, okay. There we go. the secrets of our past the memorium s2000 abs log that's the old first design what is this server Oh. Do I have access to the server? I do. Ho 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 ho. 2058. Five, six, seven, fifteen. I need a three, no fives. One, two. How many sevens? Three sevens. Shit, not this again. Triple wall. Oof, oof, okay. Oof, oh. First try, baby. Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early 30s, but our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property. Are they... Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I feel like they're purposely mispronouncing the names. Because they know how it's supposed to be pronounced. I feel like the voice actor is acting as if he's an Absurgo employee and that's how Absurgo is pronouncing the names and not Ubisoft. Which one do I need to hit? This one. No. I hit this one in the downward direction. Okay. Ah, okay.
There we go. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, January 11th, 1981. Host Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. Miriam? Miriam, is that you? Are you in here? Bartle! Oh, thank God you're safe. You've been very sick. Bartle, how did they find you? Oh, Jesus, what would they do to you? Has they hurt you at all? I told them nothing. All they do every day is ask about you and that artifact. But I didn't tell them anything. Nothing. I know you didn't, Miriam. But how are you? You aren't hurt. Not badly, no. I'm fine. Good. We need to get the message out to Oscar. Somehow. We, we need to tell him where... Very interesting footage, Eileen. This is Germany, you said, World War II? Most of the memories I've been able to access come from a period where Miriam was imprisoned by Nazis in Cologne. Miriam. Is she still alive? No, she was my husband's... Mo my ex-husband's mother. She passed away about five years ago. Well, she was spirited. An impressive lady. Definitely. And the man, Bartle. He made reference to an artifact. Any idea what that is? My team is looking into that, but it's not our first priority. We still need... It is now. Really? You must have other recordings of this woman. Are there any other mentions of this artifact I should know about? Half a dozen or so, yes. What's this about? You have questions, I understand that. I don't have answers for you. Not right now, but I do have money. And if you get me those recordings and bring me any other artifact references you find, then I will triple your operating budget for as long as I can. Triple my budget? My God, what is this? 9 a.m. Monday morning, my office. We have a lot to discuss. But Lillian, I don't... Have a good weekend, Mrs. Bach. Fantastic work. Hello, this is Carl. Hi, it's Eileen. Hey, how are you? Good. Busy. Cold. The winter's been terrible. Uh Well, he's only coming for a month. He'll live, and I'll be so busy he won't have to worry about his mother bothering him. Ah, uh, still working 12-hour days. I should move a bed into my lab. Look, if you're too busy, Seamus can stay with me. No, no, I want to see him. We'll have fun. You're not too busy to be a mom and a genius. Of course not. His flight lands at 8.15 p.m. tomorrow night. You'll be there? Of course, 8.15. P.m. Let him know you'll be there. Thanks, Carl. I need to run. I'm sorry. Take care. You too. Ah, Eileen. Didn't see you come in. I'm not interrupting. No, it's fine. The subject is unconscious. He's traipsing around 18th century New Orleans right now. In the memories of a woman. That must feel odd. How long has he been under? 83 minutes. Whoa. It's average. What can I do for you? I just wanted to... To thank you for sending Lillian to see me. She came away very impressed. There. You see, all these bureaucrats need is a little glimpse of our secrets every so often. They like to feel like they're still in charge. Lillian is most definitely in charge. She just tripled my budget. Tripled? Christ, Eileen. You must have discovered who killed Kennedy. <laughs> well, she heard something on one of my tapes that interested her. Something about an artifact. Very vague. But it was enough. An artifact? What sort of artifact? Jesus, get him out of there! Get him out! Oh, my God. It'll kill him! He's not the couple! He's having a fucking seizure! Power down! Now! Heart rate 170! Power down! Now! Eileen, Warren here. I was all ready to apologize for the late call, but you seem to be away. 
maybe with your son. Uh, listen, since the unfortunate incident with Subject 1, there's been a lot of dire talk around the office about my Animus project, about shutting it down, about it being unsafe. Typical top brass bullshit. And if they shut me down, then your surrogate initiative goes away too. I'm sure you're already well aware of that. Well, let me be the first to reassure you. This will not happen. I will not let them take this from me, from us. I will not let one death of an undiagnosed epileptic, I should add. I will not let this destroy the decades of incredible research done by our predecessors and the five years I've spent perfecting the Animus. There's still more work to be done and countless rewards to be reaped. So I wanted you to be the first to know. I have decided to volunteer myself as my second subject. I am convinced that the Animus is perfectly safe, provided I stay within the boundaries of my own ancestral bloodline. Next week I plan to prove this by staying a full four hours in the Animus. I would be grateful if you and your team would monitor my progress. And after this necessary but ridiculous proof of concept, I give you my word that I will work closely with you to solve your outstanding problems. Your surrogate initiative is a bold idea, and I do believe it is the future of the Animus Project. But while we have the Animus itself, I do not want to waste precious opportunities to prove its safety. I'll see you in the office on Monday. Goodbye. Why is that green? Oh. What what stops in this line? Okay, this one right here. There it is. Timestamp August 16th, 2013. The following audio clips were selected from over 160 hours of reel-to-reel -reel tape found in the residence of the late Dr. Warren Vidic following his murder in December 2012. According to labels on the tape's canisters, these recordings were made over a 14-month period between 1980 and 1981 without the consent of their primary subject, Mrs. Eileen Bach, a colleague of Dr. Vidic's and the originator of Abstergo's surrogate initiative. Mrs. Bach is now deceased. It should be stated unequivocally that Dr. Vidic made these recordings illegally and of his own volition using wiretaps and hidden microphones. That Stergo Industries had no knowledge of his actions and disavows any responsibility for them. And 
We're live. Capacitator set full. Ease the signal in. A little more. You feel anything? Don't be timid. Double it. No, we're taking it easy. 20%. 30. Eileen, go easy. We're six past yesterday. And boost the inputs. Too risky. Not if we split the I.O. signals. 25%. Ease up. Oh, okay. There. I see something. I... What is it? Mein Gott. I hear talking. You're... You're okay? Yeah, ja, I hear a stimme. It's... It's German. My name is Miriam Kurz. I see a light. It's cold. Ich werde nichts sagen. There's a man with me. Mehr werde ich nicht sagen. Keep an eye on our vitals. Mein Name ist Miriam Kurz und ich bin eine Navajo. Das Hitlers Zwang, der macht uns klein. Noch liegen wir in Ketten. Doch einmal werden wir wieder frei. Wir werden die Ketten schon brechen. Eileen? Denn unsere Fäuste, die sind hart, ja. Und die Messer sitzen lose. Für die Freiheit der Jugend kämpfen, Navajo. <laughs> Switch off! Powering down! Kämpf, Navajos! Get her out of there! <laughs> Oxygen! Put the valve! No! <coughs> no, Satish, I'm, I'm fine, really. Quit the heroics, just breathe! Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Did we get something? It'll take a while to pass. What did you see? It wasn't just seeing, it was feeling, being. I was. I was scared. You were shouting in German? I think I was in Germany. I was in Germany, Satish. <laughs> Good morning. Well rested? Exhausted. Yesterday was an incredible find. Seems so. What did it feel like? It's foggy, but I, I relived the memories of a young German woman. Early 20s, I think. A man was interrogating me, looming over me and asking questions. He was shouting, but I was shouting back. And then this, this poem just came out, like a chant. Fascinating. I'm eager for you to hear the tape. Is it ready? Yes, we transliterated the data onto an audio file. It took all night to process the language. Spool it up. Of course. Have a seat. Judging by the subject matter and the setting, I'd say you landed somewhere in Germany in the 1940s, one or two generations back. During the war, I'd imagine. 1940s Germany? <laughs> that would be Miriam Kurtz, my ex-husband's mother. So she's not related to you in any way? God, I hope not. I'd hate to find out my ex-husband is also my brother. <laughs> well, if it was Miriam Kurtz, then we hit a home run. You tapped into someone else's bloodline entirely. <laughs> Should we celebrate? We'll listen first. Surrogate initiative, test session 23. July 29th, 1980. Host, Eileen Bock. DNA sample, SB1970. It's a little garbled at first. This is you settling into the memory. Your name, say it. My name is Miriam Kurtz. Louder. My name is Miriam Kurtz, and I am never young. Where did you last see the artifact? Who holds it now? I'll say nothing. I have told you all I will. I don't believe that is true. Who has the artifact? Hitler's dictates make us small and are bound in chains. But one day again, we shall walk tall. No binds with us. Restrain. Enough. For hard our fists, yes, and the knives at our wrists for you to be free. Now yours lay siege. Lock her away. Now yours lay siege. And that's where we pull you out. Whoa. What would it take to get a visual render of all that? Mm, months, unfortunately. It took 13 hours just to process the audio. Visual takes much longer. But Vidic is able to record audio and visual in real time. How does he do it? His subjects are exploring their own genetic memories. That requires much less processing power. Uh, hold on, sorry. Eileen here. Hello. You have 10 o'clock in Lillian's office. It's 10.13 now. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Tell her I'll be right there and... Tell her we have some good news. No problem. You in trouble? Ugh, the monthly progress report. I'm trying to be honest about our progress, but no matter how much I polish our facts, Warren Vidic swoops in, promising the moon for pennies, and gets ten times the funding for his Animus project. Well, we are using his Animus technology. He's the foundation. We are the skyscraper. Which is why he should be a tech lead, not a project director. 
Good work, Satish. It's incredible footage, really. Clear and vivid. And the subject was synced for a full 62 minutes. Came out speaking French after his last session. Passably fluent. And with full recall of everything he'd gone through. Sorry, sorry I'm late. I was reviewing some data. It's fine. Warren was just telling me about his first subject. Mr... No names. Call him Subject One. Confidentiality. And how about you, Eileen? What's your good news? Well, we did it. We synced with an unembedded memory outside the bloodline. That's a first. Really? Satish was able to process the audio today, a short clip. You can hear it for yourself. Only audio? No real-time memory feeds like Vidic has? Well, that's the difficulty with surrogate genetic memory data. Because I'm viewing memories not embedded in my own DNA, we can't rely on my cognitive faculties to help me process the signal. All we can do is record the raw data and transliterate it later. Hold on. You're running this experiment on yourself? I am. It's going well. I don't like the sound of that. Look, the sample I'm using, the DNA comes from my own son. It's safer this way. Ah, good thinking. 50% of my son's DNA is also mine, which reduces the danger by a huge margin. Meaning, I can now explore the memories of people who aren't directly related to me, on his father's side. But for brief periods of time, I imagine. Right. Just a minute or two, so far. But we're getting there. Come by the lab and listen for yourself. I will, when I have a moment. Unfortunately, work beckons. Ladies. That man is colder than a San Francisco summer. Stay focused, Eileen. You both have important work to do. Obviously. But my work requires his animus technology. I feel a little caged in. That's collaboration, Eileen. It's how science works. I shouldn't have to remind you. I know. I'm just tired. Stop by and see us today. We have a lot to share. If not today, then this week sometime. Thank you. Is it talking about the hacker? Well, no, soon enough. But... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, I can send you the results as soon as possible. Okay. Any word on an EPA? Damn it. God, I'm worried sick. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Letitia. Bye. Hey, thanks for sharing the white whale data with me. I was able to track it down myself. No problem, man. It's amazing, right? Yeah, I tracked it down as soon as I saw your message. Followed it for a while. Couldn't catch it, though. What's with all these security notices I'm seeing lately? Just the standard message we use on occasion. Nothing to worry about. We've just had some issues around the office lately. Like server security issues? Because these notices seem pretty severe. Like draconian, actually. No, no, it's nothing to worry about, really. Walk with me and I'll explain. Pierre handed in his notice this morning. This new security measure is freaking people out. They won't let him go. 
It's part of our contract. Having ultra high security clearance means you have to go through a whole debriefing process. It takes months. Really? I had no idea. Read the fine print, man. Working for Abstergo has its benefits, but there are some drawbacks too. Big ones. Take saturated fats and high fructose corn syrups which poison us and soy which has been known to make men into women. Take computers which count so fast we cannot keep up nor should we for we are an imperfect race of disgusting shells of tissue and bone incomplete in and of ourselves. We must have masters to survive. We must admit our masters. Uh, I keep my ear to the ground. Yeah, there it is. Take the cinema which gives us lies as a man once said 24 times per second per second. Take the phonograph which preserved noises which ought to be ephe ephemeral. Take the television which is obviously stupid. Take video games which are secretly stupid and you all know you wish there were. There was more pornography, you know you do. Okay. Are there any more sticky notes? I'm guessing I cannot hack that one. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the world became an indecent place rent off its original purpose during the ages of industrial revolutions. Here it was the machines of industry we unleashed in such grand quantities, quite without understanding them, unwound them unwound motives and purposes of their own as inert as they were. Is it like a continuous sentence like it's dot dot? Abstergo sails in the toilet, okay. There has to be, what, there's nothing here really? Okay then, uh, let's go, no, I'm not gonna go to my animus yet. Let's just make sure there are no more sticky notes. I see one over there. Being that it is, wait, wait what? Should we defy? Being that those who came before and did us defy or deny the original plan, we submit. Being that it is well understood that tools, homes, cars, cul cutlery, pencils, tables, books, chairs, domesticated animals, light bulbs, mobile phones, sex toys, vacation homes, sofas, lounge, chairs, swimming pools, etc., etc., are indirect byproducts of our genotypic expressions, otherwise known as extended phenotypes, we submit. What does that even mean? I'm guessing there are no sticky notes here. Today's Absurgo Templar frauds have given themselves to base particles, well, practices, and claim wrongly that men and women 
delicate are delicate and sensible and feeling creatures in and of themselves and therefore deserve satiety and comfort and mindlessness in the presence of pleasure nothing could be sicker falser disgusting lying bastards huh okay what is this And he's taking outs. Now mouse taking outs. Anything over here? No. Okay then, let's go to some other floor. Let's go to the lobby. servers any sticky notes oh there's one yes we submit that we are such tools and as such have a purpose befitting a tool we submit we are like hammers and wrenches and shovels made for a specific purpose not our own we submit that our purpose is indivisible from the will of those who came before we submit ourselves our bodies and our minds utterly What is up with that? Like we summit, we summit. Ah, <sighs> I like these ones the most. Seven, ten, twelve. So we need three and two. Seven, three, three. No, seven, seven, three, five. No, it can't be five, two. Wait, uh, it's 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, we don't need a 3. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 37, August 9th, 1981. Host, Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. Open! Good morning, Miss Kurtz. You look well, considering the circumstances. Are you rested? Hmm. Have you eaten? Your friends are dead, Miriam. Bartle Shink and all his navigators, his Edelweiss pirates. Executed for five counts of murder. It has a trial. You must be proud. There was no need. They were scum. All of them. You hear me? All of you are scum. 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 <laughs> I see it so clearly now. She didn't break, did they? You have nothing. Quiet, girl. You don't have the yours effect. If you did, you wouldn't be talking to me at all. Now of yours lay seat. I said no. Now yours oh. lay seat. Open your eyes. Can you hear me? Eileen. Eileen. Power's off. Get the position in here. Step aside, son. Eileen, talk to me. Can you open your eyes? 
Clear! Oh, no spot! towards a speech in honor of Dr. Eileen Bach's premature retirement. When I first learned of Dr. Bach's unfortunate accident, I couldn't help but feel a great sense of loss at... No. No, no. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Eileen Bach has and always will be a friend and colleague. When I first learned of her unfortunate accident, I was shocked, of course. To see any friend injured in such a way is deeply upsetting. And to further learn that her injuries were severe enough to force a premature conclusion to her brilliant career, well... I would not wish that fate on anyone. But, if there is any solace to be found in her accident, it may be this. That she was injured in service of her research. In service of work that she cherished most dearly. And it is thanks to her, it is due to her diligence, that some of the mysteries of genetic memory have been further illuminated. And while it is true that work on her project, the surrogate initiative, as she called it, has been temporarily halted, the copious amount of work she has done over the past three years has been incredibly valuable. So while her work has been suspended for the time being, her legacy will most certainly live on. <laughs> No. Bruh. Are you serious? died that many times we are attempting to synchronize oh, the DDS same. system this will only take a moment we are almost there the DDS is now in sync thank you for your patience we hope you enjoy your experience Rudolf II invited many notable figures to his court making Prague the center of European is culture among them were Englishman Edward Kelly and his stepdaughter, Elizabeth Jane Weston. Observe her and report any alleged collusion.
Is that? Wait, do I come out on top? I just wanna know. Oh, I do! So if there are red borders on the top and bottom, that means I don't. Ah, oh, I didn't even know that. February 12, 1981. Qualitative personal interview with subject one on ancestral research regarding Avalon de Grand Prix. How are you feeling? Any side effects? Not really, aside from the headaches. They've been worse since I started staying in longer, but I don't want to stop. I like her. I want to know what she does next. What's it like? Reliving her memories. So different. The animus, I mean. The past. At first it was confusing. Distracting. Like New Orleans. The stench. I wasn't expecting all the smells. Smell is the sense most directly linked to memory. When I'm in her memories, it's like I can smell more than I usually can. In general, women have a more acute sense of smell than men do. I had wondered how that would translate. Anything else? Uh, yeah. She's smaller than me, but it's like her body could do more. Did that surprise you? At first, yeah. The ERA people might hate me for this or whatever, but I don't usually think of girls that way. Climbing things. My mom, my sisters. But the animal feeling of Aveline sinking her hidden blade in her throat of... Go on. It doesn't feel... feminine. What I think of as feminine. But then at the same time, it does. Her center of gravity is way lower. That was a surprise. How easy it is to land. How steady I am on her, her feet. Sorry. This is hard to talk about. No, it's, it's fascinating. This is what we need. Pure experience, in your own words. Okay. Can you tell me about Gerald Blunk? What about him? He and Avalon were close, but we haven't been able to ascertain if he might be your missing ancestor. Do her memories suggest anything to you? Um... Does this make you uncomfortable? Remember, these are her memories. You're just playing them back. It's not even acting. You're a researcher. Like you say, I haven't experienced her consummating anything. That, that would be... Anyway, I think maybe she was confused. Oh. Well, um, first of all, I don't really know for sure, okay? I mean, guys think about sex more than girls, right? That's a fact. As a researcher, what did you observe? Does it mean she's more like a guy if she thinks about... Is that why she's able to assassinate... Well, okay, here's the thing. I don't know her thoughts, but from what's in her memories, physically, the, the, the fidgeting, some hesitation, what she looked at, who she looked away from, the things she didn't say when I expected her to. If I had to guess what it meant, I would think she was thinking about sex. But I'm a guy, so I would think that, right? So what does it mean for women to act that way? It has to mean something else, right? As a subject, you're able to observe more finely than I am in review. What about unwanted attention from men? Well, I thought that would be the hardest thing to deal with. I'm not into that, for the record. Not at all. Yes, I know. But the way she dealt with it, it happens so often. She, It's like you stop noticing everything she does to avoid it. Crossing the street, eyes in the back of her head. She knew how to handle herself. When she was charming, felt kind of similar to killing, or the build-up to killing. 
I... Can we take a break, Mr. Vidic? Of course. We're ready to go on? Yes. Avalyn was black. And white. On her father's side. You're sensitive to that? I guess. I mean, I'm white. Aveline looks black, so that's different. But y you get used to it. Like, with the girl thing. Until someone makes you not used to it. What do you mean? I don't think I've ever had to think so much about what I'm wearing or how I'm walking. But Aveline, it's like... She goes through her whole life in these... Uniforms. People expect her to behave in a certain way. Definitely. Sometimes I worry I'll slip up and play too relaxed at the warehouse and, I don't know, blow her cover. You can't blow her cover. I know, I know. I'm just replaying the memories. I can't change them, I know. But, but I, I see it, right? It's a risk. It's... Stressful? Yes. It's best when she goes out as an assassin. On the roofs or in the bayou. I think she was more relaxed that way. Can you imagine? You're only relaxed when you're going to kill someone. Let's stick to memories rather than imagination. What about the slaves? They're kind of just... everywhere. I mean, that, that sounds bad. Slavery is bad. But, but no one's acting like slavery is bad. It's fun when she frees slaves. Is it supposed to be fun? We're not looking for supposed to. Focus on what it is. <sighs> so, Evelyn is liberation, I know that. Who is Elizabeth? And so it's basically this guy control, I mean, not controlling, but reviewing her memories and he feels like Chicago. it's her doing it. Shareholders meeting and just vanished. Glad that's over. I hate it when they escalate the security. It makes me jumpy. They put anyone in the bunker this time? Just for a few days, I think. It sucks, but I suppose it's necessary. We deal with some really sensitive data. Classified shit, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but uh, it's in our contract, so. And they pay out bonuses too. Inconvenience pay, they call it. Really? That's actually kind of nice. So, did I get inconvenience pay? Hey, buddy. Hey. What is this? A huge ass room. Okay. What we got? We can just go down. That's not gonna work. I'm 
back here again. Chat archive. Everybody's working on the weekend. Mel and Olivier. I'm not gonna read that now. This can only come from here, this is not possible. We got these two, that's... That point's not possible, this is possible, which comes from here. Which comes from here. Which comes from here. Both. 
This was during the events of three. Jesus, this door's going crazy. Then revolutions in America and France bled into evolutions and into more revolutions into Russia and Mexico and India. And the sickening list goes on as men and women fight and died for the right to be indolent and sick and pleasure. But she, may she guide us into the grave, has returned after a sleep of, ten of thousand, tens of thousands of millennia and we submit to live and work at her side. We the instruments of the first will. Was there anything here? Nope, we got it all. screen anything left over here all right the server notes no sticky notes nothing over here seven two nine and three so we need a three no twos There's only one doorway. Oh, okay. Gotta time that. Oh man. This is too difficult. Okay. Let's not die. Wait, 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 wait. Hit it. Oh! also going down no Let's start from the top. Oh god. What is that? Fuck.
Dude, this is insane. Oh, uh, okay. Oh no, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. I made it. Okay, 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 okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Let's uh let's jump when I'm at the top. Right there. Perfect. Oh that took way too long. Is it another reading? Haytham! Suave, debonair and clever, Haytham Kenway was a hero for a generation of men desperate for a decisive and charismatic leader. Slain by the ungrateful son who could not appreciate the wisdom of his pragmatic, race-blind approach to politics and personal life, Kenway's tenure as Grandmaster of the Colonial Right ended abruptly in 1781. Admit them and submit to them. Yes, we submit that by being ourselves the product of an advanced yet earthbound race of intelligent humanoids, we must also therefore be tools ourselves and subject to the intents and purposes of our creators, despite our limited agency. I don't suppose I get the outside access. Oh, now we can go back. Let's just check if there are any sticky notes. No notes. Can I enter? I can. What the hell? Is that bubbles? No, that's birds. Into the grey, the digital frontier, the singularity, the space in which she dwells, being both made of light and embodiment of darkness. This we call the grey, being that we are the instruments of her will, instruments of the first will, the original will. We submit this credo to the world. There is a number 20 somewhere. Damn. Hey, that's the... That's, uh... Was it in 2? I think this was in Assassin's Creed 2, right? Even that one? Edward Kenyewe is supposed to be full confidential, huh? Employees cubicle. Oh, this was in the basement? Okay, let's 
let's get the two computers first. Those are the only ones left. Oh, okay. No teleports. Uh Two, three, four, four points. the same shit. There we go. Agent evaluation report of Johanny Otzoberg dated 12th November. Is that 12th November? Or is that 11 December? This would have been leaked. This would have been. This would have to have been leaked from within. This is a classified document viewed on our network. Someone should hang for this. Strengths: experienced agents, military, special forces. Background is a definitive asset. Obedient, follows orders without question. Leadership qualities. Agent lacks finesse but inspires loyalty in others. Dedicated agent is wholly committed to our cause. Definite potential could be IS material. Weakness agent has a young three year old daughter, could be a liability. Damn. Other notes agent is ready to take on greater challenges. Recommended giving agent leadership responsibilities. Sending agent on level 5 mission. Unclear who took this or why. This photo label Florence, Italy. Florence, Italy, okay. Cool. Makes it clear we have a leak. Who survived to transmit this photo? Photo labeled Cairo, Egypt. This one's labeled Cairo, Egypt. Sigma team strikes again. The poster claims Absurgo agents kidnapped William Miles, but Miles is not pictured. Could be anything. The updated agent evaluation of Otsoberg dated 12 December. 2003 confirms that leak persisted and perhaps still exists. Updated strength demonstrated a great deal of courage, initiative, resourcefulness, and dedication. Weakness is squishing mark, facial scar, burn, reparative surgery should be considered. Following assassin attack on 2112 11 28, see that security report. Agent tracked down the enemy and located their Florence hideout. Agent led Sigma strike team against the Florence assassins responsible for the termination of three assassins survived the assassin ambush agent should not be held accountable for the loss of his team one more computer to hack There are two options. That's pretty easy. Hello. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 27, October 21st, 1980. Host Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. <coughs> Miriam. Miriam. There is no good reason for you to be here. 
But your intransigence requires that I detain you until you give me information I can act upon. The location of the artifact, perhaps, or the whereabouts of your leader, Bartle Shing. Just a little something to give Minister Goebel some encouragement that we are on the right track. How about a nice hug? He looks so sad in all his photographs. <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't he? Perhaps you could pay him a visit yourself. He likes beautiful women. Actresses, musicians. Pirates. That's right, pirates. Pirates of the Edelweiss. Isn't that what you kids call yourselves? It's very amusing. And illegal, of course. Breaking Hitler's laws is half the fun. Oh, I imagine so. I imagine you were having a wonderful time just before we captured you on your search of friends. And that's the end of it. Damn it. Why can't we sustain the signal for more than just a few minutes? I need to relax. That's not the issue. This is dangerous work. These memories aren't in your bloodline. That's why it's not holding. There's got to be a solution. Uh, any idea what they mean by the artifact? I've heard it a few times now. Not sure. I don't think Miriam knew either. Not much comes into her mind when she asks about it. But she's protecting the other members of her group. The Edelweiss pirates or something? Yeah. Bartol Schink. Have we looked him up? No, we can. We should. Put your intern on it. <laughs> right. High priority. Yeah. <sighs> this isn't getting any easier. Jesus. Hello? Hi, Seamus. It's Mom. Hey. How are you? Dad! It's Mom! <sighs> Hello, Eileen. Hi, Carl. How's Seamus? Great. We were out shopping for school clothes. Yeah. The summer just sped by. They all do. I never seem to notice. No windows in the office. Right. Trapped in the lab. So, did you need to talk? Yes, sorry. I was curious about your mother, actually. Oh. Okay. How much did she talk about the war when you were growing up? Not often. Bits and pieces. Why? I was doing some research last week about World War II, and something came up about the Edelweiss pirates, or the Navajos, and your mother's name popped up. Really? That's an odd coincidence. Does that... does any of that ring a bell? Yeah. Mom ran with that group while the war was on. There were a group of kids who wanted to avoid the Hitler Youth programs, but in later years they escalated their activities to, uh... bigger ideas like vandalism and sabotage. But why Navajos? And pirates? Just some of the names they used. Navajos, Edelweiss pirates, you know, kids. There were little pins, little white flowers. I may still have hers. That's interesting. And this is for work? Researching my mother? Not exactly, but... Sorry, I can't talk about it. Right. You never could. Hey, don't. I didn't mean to be flippant. No. Don't mind me. All for the greater good. I like to think so. Take it easy, Eileen. You're just stressed. I am not stressed. I'm frustrated. I'd like to go again this afternoon. No. There is no reason to rush this. We're hardly rushing. We're running into the same wall over and over again. Why can't we push through? Why can't you keep me in the Animus longer than two minutes? Because surrogate genetic memory data is fragile. The EEG is exploding and your brain is doing too much work. The longer you stay in, the more damage it does. It's even possible that... Possible that... It's possible the memories we're digging into could eventually overwrite your own. Like information on a tape drive. There's just not enough space in your head to do both. Here I come to save the day! <laughs> Good afternoon, all. Did you invite him? No, but you did. Remember? That was months ago, Warren. What do you need? I wanted to stop by. Check on your progress. Well, apparently it's still too dangerous to keep me under for more than a few minutes. Hmm. I always suspected that would be your biggest hurdle. The genetic memory sequencing is the easy part, if time-consuming. But the replay, that's something else. Yes? Let's think this through. 
My subjects are diving into their own genetic memories, so the information is already encoded in their heads. Which means the animus has less work to do, less computing, less parsing. Right. So to get your surrogate data working, to let people experience foreign memories, it'll take a hell of a lot more processing power than anyone has. Even Abstergo Industries. Ideally, we'd like to build an external processor that mirrors as many brain functions as possible. Something to handle the calculations. But the cost and upkeep of that would be astronomical. Let me see what I can do. I have some sway with Lillian. We won't build Rome in a day. But if we focus on the pretty buildings first, maybe we'll achieve something. Thank you, Warren. Till next, folks. She once wrought had wrought anew and will resurrect her into a new form. Beautiful, 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 yes. The world and all its digital technology is now an expression of her life and her work began over 80,000 years ago and she and now she has come to reclaim them. She, beloved beautiful Juno. May she guide us into the grey. Juno was the evil one, right? I'm not I don't remember much. It was Juno, Minerva, and then someone else. Body's been moved? Yes, sir, and preserved. We'll do what we can. Good. Let's keep security units on standby. I know Miss LeMay said the situation was under control, but I have a feeling we may be needing them again soon. Okay. This is the server. Let's uh, just look for sticky notes, no sticky notes. I don't suppose anyone would come down here and put a sticky note, right? So, damn server room. into the animals from here why not do that mine this is mine oh sticky note that number one yeah manifesto of the instruments of the first will written by a true disciple this day 21st october 2013 in anticipation of the anniversary of her ascension may she guide us into the grave Oh, that works, okay. Back at my cove. Gentlemen, how do you find it here? It will work for us. But our goal must be to scatter our operations. To live and work among the people we protect, just as Altairi Ben Lahad once counseled. Well, until that time, it's yours as you see fit. Edward, Captain Woods Rogers survived his wounds. He has since returned to England, shamed and in great debt. 
but no less a threat. I will finish that job when I return. You have my word. Evening, Anne. Edward? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. <laughs> England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irish woman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, I. And my mind is settled and my blood is cooled. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! <laughs> You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father too. Oh, is she pregnant? His neck is going through the collar. Of all the money that ever I had, I spent it in good company. And all the harm that ever I've done. Oh, man. What? Did you always know how to sail a boat? The jackdaw is a ship, Jen. Not a boat. But did you always know? No. No, I learned after leaving Bristol. After you left Mother? Well, I didn't leave your... I didn't leave without saying goodbye, that is. It was an arrangement, you see, between your mother and me. She said you left her. She said you always talked about sailing a boat. And making money in the new world. I did always want to sail a ship. That's true. But not for a lot. To support us. To take care of her. And you. Not me. Mother said you didn't know about me. She said you worked only once a year and that she never knew where to find you. That's all true, and I'm sorry for that. But I'd known earlier. I might have come home. 
talk to like one of you. Well, you were busy. That's what I think. I was, but that wouldn't have mattered. Can I steal your boat? Boat? I see no boat here. Do you? Oh, I mean ship, obviously. I don't see the difference anyway. Ah, it's a very simple one, Jenny. A ship can carry a boat, but a boat cannot carry a ship. Why then, everything is a ship. Large and small. But for my toy boat, the one I take into the bath with me. <laughs> That's a clever way of seeing it. Is it hard to talk about Caroline, Jenny? About your mother? Mm, no. She passed some years ago. I miss her, but it's all right. Was she in pain? I don't know. I don't think so. She was very happy for quite some time. Then, not so happy. I didn't see her much after that. Then, she was gone. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. It's all right. You're here now. And we're on an adventure. Now, only a little one, I hope. Can't handle too many more surprises. You think we'll see a whale? Yes, there's a very good chance. Mm. And what about pirates? Will I see pirates? No. Not much chance of that, I think. Oh, that's right, Sad. I should have liked to have seen one. Tell you what, Jenny. As soon as these winds die a little, I'll let you steal the jackdaw. One little trick at the helm before sundown. Yay! <laughs> Dead Edward? <clears throat> Miss Jennifer Kenway, may I introduce myself? Jennifer Scott, if you please. I'm sorry, I... I... Uh... My daughter was raised by her mother, Caroline, until she passed away some years ago. Jenny prefers to use her surname to mine. Ah, please forgive my ignorance. I will. She may not. Father, help me. This little rascal, however, is a Kenway. What's wrong, Haven? I can't see the stage. Up we go. How's that? Fine. But won't your arms tire? Hey, I'm not so old as that. But if they do, then we shall quit this posh gig and go and meet your mother for some chocolate and whites. How's that sound? Yes, please. Okay, hush now. What is this? That's the assassin contract. Congratulations, what? New relic, portrait, emblem, and title unlock for the multiplayer. I don't have access to the multiplayer. How did that map just show up? 
naval contracts this is the one that was bugged right Still not there. We need to finish this one first. Oh, the final contract? One final privateering contract is now available. Oh! Oh, it's the last one. So I could have done this before the credits. Okay. Well, had I known that, I wouldn't have wasted so much time. I can wait. the Hollander what's my crew count I don't think I have enough, uh... As a teammate, I'm supposed to protect it. Ah, okay. Oh, no. Oh, don't run me.
it's around. Oh my god, so many. Our merchant friend has earned himself some serious enemies. Oh, is that the the chubby merchant that I met in the beginning of the game? Or is the sailor rescue or the rescue? Where? There he is. We got a full crew now. Yes, the final contract. Golden Flintlock. Okay. What happens to you now? Can I board you? Oh, you're on fire, boy. Oh, okay. Oh, you sail away. Okay.
Why did I still don't understand why that map showed up? There are three, three buried treasures left as well. Where are those? Savannah back to normal. Havana is back to normal. Lock doesn't have range. Do I have the best sword already? Five, four, three. Yeah, I guess so. Necesita ayuda, caballero. Prerequisite plan. Requires twenty five thousand. Quizás en otro momento le venga bien. Let's start collecting. Pass through. Oh, this is a pass through. Okay, so I don't suppose I can... Gain money high, really? How high? It's gonna be like 5,000 or something. I'm looking at it, please. Oh my god. 
10,000, easy. You guys can take care of that, right? Wow, what the fuck? Something with 600 wood or something, right? What is that? A oh, 400 wood. That's the one. Can still afford one more item. Leather sails. Let's go for something else. Gilded sails. Edward the Legend. Can I not scroll this? Okay. 
What's the governor outfit? Morning to you. Is this going to be difficult? This one is gonna be two this time as well. Look at the size of her. Let's go. Six hundred animation starts. Five hundred. This the one. Oh God! Okay, it's a motor. That's a mortar ship. What the fuck is that? Oh. 
I need to kick him with full armor. Not armor, but ammunition. Alright. Only one shot left. I'm gonna save that one. One more direct hit, and we're put a thing. Oh, he's going for the ramp. We're dead. No, we're not. Oh, we're dead. Yep. Okay. Can I fast travel out of there, man? Jesus Christ. Where is it? Unfold mains, let's move. Up those shrouds, let's move. Chain shots is infinite. This is infinite. Travel now. I can't. I don't have money. You require my services. I do not have money. What can I sell? Hunting goods? Nah, let's keep that. They're all five? Damn. Uh, let's sell 97 of that. Metal, we can sell 58. I need to sell it first, right? Uh, let's go 197. I tell we can go 58. <sighs> that should give us some ammo. Mortar shots full. Excellent. 
excellent. Good day. I can keep the heat off. For a fee. Damn. Alright then, I think I am gonna end it here. The game is over. But I do want to get 100% achievement if you want to watch that. I will be continuing, so do stay tuned for those. Including missions, the optional ones that I could not complete. I will be doing that. So, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.